Hello again, this is Tim Baldridge, and welcome to episode two of our tutorials on Core Async. Today we're going to look at extending our pipeline from just dealing with single values as the output of functions to being able to handle sequences and channels. We would use channels perhaps when we have an asynchronous operation that we want to suspend part of the pipeline and wait for a, uh, a network call to return. Or perhaps um, uh, we want to return many options that then kind of fan out and are handled by um, other steps in the process. So to begin with today, um, we're going to add uh, go, take and put uh, parking from the uh, uh, async uh, namespace. And we're also going to call, um, bring in closure core async impl protocols and call that impl. And we'll see where we use that in a little bit. Uh, we're gonna need to be able to tell if something's a channel and the protocols we need for that is in this impl uh, protocols namespace. So to start with, we need to rename, we need to rewrite map. Map as it is in the core async library is meant, uh, is meant to take a single value, you apply a function and put the return of that uh, function on the channel. Um, but that's not really um, how we're going, we need to use it today. We need to write our own function. So we're gonna call this defn map extended. We're gonna take an in uh, channel, a function, and an out channel. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of go, go loop here. And we're going to call when sum. Now this is a new macro added in uh, Closure 1.6. Um, we've had when let for a while, but um, when sum works like when let, except for it only succeeds, uh, only fails when you get a nil. It actually succeeds in the case of a false. So this is um, useful when we're doing things like core async, where nil indicates the closing of the channel, but false is a valid value. So we're going to take val is going to be um, a value taken from in. And then we're going to say let val is f of val. So we're going to apply our function. And then we're going to create a cond. And we're going to start with the end of the cond and say, um, in our else case, do uh, put, <laughs> put onto the out channel val and recur. Now, in the case of a sequence um, or a vector, then what we want to do is this, async onto chan, and then we're gonna take a out channel and our value and recur. So in core async, we have this function called onto chan, which takes channel and a collection and it puts all the items of that um, uh, collection onto the channel, but it itself returns a channel um, that is closed once the entire uh, uh, um, spooling onto the channel completes. So we can just take from that and we'll wait. We won't advance in, in this anymore until we've put all of the um, values onto the output channel. Now this is useful because um, there's actually a limit of how many values can be pending onto a channel at once. If we just fired this off, this would create go blocks that are hanging out there waiting to put onto our output channel. And those could pile up and cause an error. Um, not to mention that they, it kind of creates a memory leak. We're just creating go blocks that may never succeed. So what this does is allow us to take advantage of back pressure so that we won't continue to try to take values from our input until all of our output values have been put onto the channel. So that works pretty well. Um, and now what we're gonna do is do the same thing. Um, for channels. If we get a read port, that's that impl namespace we looked at before, um, and val uh, extends that uh, protocol, then what we're gonna do is do um, pipe of val to out and recur. Now, this, we might be tempted to write it like this. There's one problem, is that this will not work. Because pipe actually, turn, actually returns the output channel and not um, the go block responsible for, for putting the values onto the output channel. So we're going to rewrite pipe um, as well. We're going to call this pipe extended and out. And what this is going to look like is go uh, when some val we're going to take in and then we're going to say for every value we take we're going to put it into out and we'll recur. So that's pipe extended, and that works as expected. So if we get a read port, so the, the, the read and write portions of channels are split up into the two pieces. We have the ability to say, is this thing um, writable? 
And is this thing readable? In this case, because we're only reading from it, we only care about it being a read port. There are some things such as maps, um, like the, the map um, uh, read port that is returned from map uh, right here that only implement one of those two interfaces. Not everything implements both. So we'll say if it's a read port, then we will pipe um, that um, uh, read port into the output and wait for it to end and then recur. And here in our pipe extended, we have a go block. Go blocks return channels, so we can wait for the completion of that go block. So that's uh, map extended. Let's uh, let's pull all this in. So we have uh, two proc from before. Pipe extended. Here is our. Um, uh, did I? I don't think I imported that correctly. So let's try this again. Uh, could not resolve. Oh yes, because I re I named that wrong, didn't I? It's this symbol, not the other one. There we go. So then we have map extended. Okay, so now we have our map extended. And this removes a lot of the complexity that we saw in the last um, uh, um, episode. So what we're just going to do instead is do map. We're going to do here, we're going to create an output channel. C, um, async chan. And we're going to call this out C. And I like to give channels a, a certain size um, of a buffer. And so we're going to default here to a buffer of size n because we have that many of processes will be spinning up so each one of these processes can put a value in and that value can kind of be sitting there while it's doing more work. Just a, um, I wouldn't even call it a rule of thumb, it's just something that the way I like to code. Um, you can put any number in here and this should more or less work the same. Uh, so now let's do do uh, times of we don't care to n number and map extended and we're going to pull from in give it the function f and we're going to do out c and then we'll return out c and all of this code here can go away. All right, and we have unbalanced friends. There we go. Um, and in is actually previous C. There we go. Okay, so there's our pipeline operation. Now, this should still work. Wrong number of args passed to reduce down here. Um, uh, that's because we, that's where our um, parens were met, messed up. There we go. There we go. And there we go, there's 43. Now, we should be able to do something like range. And this should not show a sequence, but should show zero. So we're going to do 42, we're going to increment it to 43, increment it to 44, then we're going to turn it into a range and put all of those into stir and take one of those. And we get zero as the output. Only one value, because it's taken range and pulled apart the sequence returned by this function, and it's putting them onto the channel one at a time. Now let's try something a little bit different. What if we call async to chan, we're going to create an anonymous function here. Uh, we'll, we'll just name the variable x here. And what that anonymous function will do is create a channel. Um, we're going to call to chan, which is an async function that takes a sequence and put, it creates a channel with those items put onto the channel one at a time. And the sequence we're going to take here is um, range of x. And we get zero. Okay. That works just like before, but let's take multiple ones here. Let's say async into, this is just like a seek into, but we're going to put it into a vector, and this is an asynchronous operation, so it returns a channel and we take from that. And async take four. And we get zero, one, two, three. Cool, that works. What if we take a few more? There we go, one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. So we can see this works. We turn it into a channel, it's taking the items one at a time from that channel, turning them into strings, and outputting them here. So before we do anything else, let's do one last thing just for fun. Let's create a um, variant of this that waits for a, a unspecified amount of time. So there's um, rand int in uh, Closure Core, and we could wait up to a thousand milliseconds, let's say. So um, we're gonna we're gonna use this to drive the timeout. 
So we're gonna create a, something called defn uh, pause rnd. And this will take an item called x, and it will create a go block that waits uh, rnd uh, and int, waits for a up to a second, random amount of time, and then returns x. So this will pause for a random amount of time and then return the value. So if we put this into our, our system here and we give it a value of one, pause rmd, and let's take um, two items from here. This should wait for about two seconds before completing. Uh, wrong number of arcs, yes, because this isn't taking. One, two, there we go, zero and one, about two seconds. Now what happens if we, hmm, if we turn this up to three processes? They come out of order. And that's because the different go blocks in that are running this pause random step are running in parallel and waiting for, a, for an unspecified amount of time, just a random amount of time. If we take a few more of these, um, if we do, if we take 10 and 10 here, this should take no longer than about one second to run all of these because they're all running in parallel. Oh, there we go. And what's interesting here is the numbers are, are from the set of range here. They're, they're in between 0 and 44, but they're in completely out of order because they're being sent off, spooled into different channels, and different blocks are waiting for uh, to take different values, and they're being buffered in different places, and they're all just kind of piling up. So if perhaps one of the blocks got a really small amount of random uh, each time it called rand int and uh, was eager and pulled more of its values while the other ones were slower and waiting. So here we see a very a very um, uh, interesting powerful system where we can start to create these pipelines that have the ability to fan out in the case of returning a sequence. They can pause, do asynchronous operations, come back later, and continue on. Um, and this is great. I mean, we can throw a little bit of uh, error handling in here to handle what happens when one of these functions throws an error. Um, and maybe we'll do that in one of the next episodes. But even as it is here, we have a basis for a really powerful system. Um, and I encourage you to, to uh, play around with this code and see what you can come up with. Well, thank, so thank you for watching today. Um, please uh, uh, keep your eye out for any future videos and uh, hope to see you back.